Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to Subluminous. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, I've been working on some artwork for uh, some of the books that I've been working on. Uh, and so I wanted to do a little drawing session. <clears throat> so I'm going to be working on, this is for the first chapter of my book, A Sovereign in Hell. Um, the ideas that I was going to have. Maybe one, uh, one picture for every chapter. Um, the pictures are a little bit kind of intense as far as drawing is concerned. So, um, they've been taking me a little bit longer than I had planned, uh, but I'm sticking with it. So, um, I don't know if you, if any of you are familiar with sort of old school illustration techniques, but this is, uh, this is, uh, a style called intaglio, um, which in, in the 1800s, maybe late 1700s, uh, intaglio was, where they would put a piece of copper on a, uh, they would attach it to a piece of wood and then they would uh, put a thin coat of wax on the top of it. And they would, it was like an etching, but it was much easier than a typical etching because you didn't actually have to scratch into the metal or the wood. And they would just scratch into the wax. And um, it was kind of the cornerstone of um, printing for a hundred years. And they would um, use these etchings to for books and penny dreadfuls and all kinds of different things and i actually have a a book that i'm going to use as a reference which is uh dante's inferno that was um it has dore's illustrations in it and this is actually from my great great grandfather that's my great great grandfather's signature um and then the publishing date is 1814 for this particular book and uh it's if you're not familiar with Dante's Inferno, it's about um, Dante who travels through hell um, in, into the Inferno. And uh, it's got all of these etchings in it. So this is, I think this is heaven, actually. Um, uh, and I'm not really sure if you can see that pretty well. But but it's uh, all the etchings are made by like very little fine lines. So if you, this book in particular, since it was 1819, this this image was printed by hand so somebody would create the intaglio print and then they would print all of the folio plates by hand and this is not this is a small version of of dante's inferno there were larger larger versions with more detailed imagery and this is before photography was really prolific in the printing world or anything like that so uh so every time they did a different edition somebody would have to redraw this picture onto a copper plate and then they would print the edition. So if they did a bigger version, somebody would redraw this in a much larger format. So it's kind of a, a tedious process. Um, so I feel a little bit bad that I'm doing mine in, in digital. This is a, another example of one of the illustrations. Um, this book is very old too, but what's really interesting is that you can see the darkness and lightness of the characters. This is all based on the density of the illustration. So if you scratch out more um, thicker lines then um, and the lines are closer together, then you're going to get a darker value. If you scratch really lightly and the lines are further apart, then you're going to get um, um, a lighter value. So it's, it's almost it's kind of an interesting like blend between like almost an analog and digital approach because it's it's black and white. There's no actual shades of gray. And it uses the moray patterns and um, the um, difference in valuation is just based off of how much ink is laid down in a certain area on the page. And uh, this book is, is I, I forgot how many illustrations are in here, but there's, there's a fair amount of illustrations. Uh, there's also a lot of writing. Um, so the, you know, Dante was a prolific writer, but I also have some recreations, some modern recreations where they have scanned in uh various gustave doré illustrations and doré is probably my favorite illustrator um he's one of those guys that um was a, a great artist in his own right but he was not uh accepted as an artist by um uh many people uh especially the i guess the french art community because they didn't they didn't consider illustration to be an art form um at the time the art forms were um painting, sculpture, and architecture. So drawings were considered sort of something that you threw away um, and, or it was something that you were doing when you were studying to do a painting 
or a sculpture or architecture, but the drawing itself was not valuable. Um, but if you look at some of these pictures that he's created, they're just really remarkable. And so um, I'm using uh, Dore as a reference. Um, there's a lot of other intaglio artists that were um, represented from the time, um, but Dore just happens to be my favorite. So I am working on um, a demon from the first chapter of my book. So there's in this chapter, uh, Lucifer is um, bathing. So Lucifer's down here. I haven't finished him yet. I'm, I've just started Lucifer. But uh, Lucifer is bathing in this um, uh, pool. Um, and this creature comes up from the depths of the pool or whatever. And so this is the, the very first chapter illustration. Um, uh, and you can see I've, I've got a fairly good start on filling this out. I'm using my pen pad um, to draw and uh, basically um, I'll draw the basic shape and then I'll put down some the primary set of lines which might cover the entire character that sort of sets the basic gray tone and then I'll go in and fill with additional lines so you can tell that when when I draw with like uh, let's see the brush tool uh, well Maybe if I draw with the brush tool, see my layers. Let me see what my layers are doing. Oh, okay. Uh, let's pick a layer. Thick. All right. There we go. So that's my thick, thick line. Um, and I've got a set of brushes that I've been using where I can pick the brush and and it's and it works with um, pressure sensitivity. So I can do like kind of thin lines or I can do really thick, thick lines. So um, that's the basic premise. And then basically you, you know, just go through and add a whole bunch of lines. Uh, I guess really quickly, I got I need to do a, um, I need to have a, a Mr. Rogers moment because I got to change glasses and put on my drawing glove. Um, I've got one of these gloves that's, this is a touch screen. So you can move the illustration around. Uh, you can also do stuff like rotate the illustration, uh, which is kind of cool. And uh, and so it lets you just sort of manipulate the illustration better. But because the touch screen reacts to um, touch, I've got to have this, this kind of glove that I wear that um, prevents the touch from being detected. And so that way I can uh, draw and touch at the same time. Otherwise I'd have to sort of turn touch off. I have a tool that lets me turn the touch on and off. Um, but, um, it's easier if I just, you know, so it doesn't detect my hand here, does detect my hand here. So that way I can, you know, move around and then draw. So, um, if anybody has any questions or anything about sort of what I'm doing, feel free to stick them in there. Oh yeah. I also need to see, oh no, I changed my glasses out. I got to change my glasses out too. Cause these are my sort of up close work things. Um, my uh, recommendation is don't get old because your eyes start going. Um, so part of this that I need to create for this uh, particular character is uh, a background. And so I'm going to work on creating, uh, th this is supposed to be like a hallway in Lucifer's temple. And so I'm going to work on trying to figure out like what the background would look like for Lucifer's temple. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, my sort of basic understanding of the temple is that it's going to be, I'll probably use some some shape tools. I'll lock these other ones. Um, I'll use some sort of basic shape tools to try and, try and create like some perspective because I kind of wanted to to go very deep into the room and I want it to sort of look like there's a high ceiling. So there's going to be lots of little detail up at the top. So probably first, I'll sort of figure out what my what my shapes are going to be like. So 
So my ideas may be back. Something like that. And then my guess is we'll use pen tool. The to sort of think about the depth here. And this is not really, this does not need to be perfect right now. I'm just sort of thinking about what this would look like. Um, and I imagine that there, I don't know, I feel like there should be like lots of little windows or something. Um, but this sort of general shape is probably the shape that I would go with. So for instance, um, if I was going to, use my brush to sort of create that that back end. I would sort of follow this line. And then that's not really super great. See. Something like that. And then you can kind of um, create a secondary line. And what's kind of cool about since it's digital, I can take some shortcuts. So there's this blending tool that you can use and it will create a blend between objects. Assuming I can find the blending tool, there we go. Um, and so let's see. Apparently I forgot how to use the blending tool. There we go. Okay. Sorry. It's clicking on the wrong thing. So basically the blending tool says, you know, take this shape, take this shape and then sort of blend the two together. And the idea here is that you can tell it sort of um, what you want. I guess I better put a, a white background in between these layers. So let's see. because that's bleeding through. So if I create sort of a So I create a white background in there to go between the illustration and what's happening. All right, it's weird. Oh, it's not weird. It's what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so... No. Oh, well, that's not going to work. Ugh trying to think of what I'm going to do. Oh, I need a, my white background to be actually needs to be blocked out by this particular character shape. So I'll probably have to just draw one real quick. So let's do that instead. Um, all right. So let's call this background real, real, real quick. And then it's really a mat, but you know, tomato, tomato. All right, so. Let's 
something's happening with my my board. The pen's not getting detected. All right, this may be a really short, uh, <laughs> maybe a really short drawing tutorial. My computer locks up. Oh, there we go. I don't know what happened there. Okay, back in business. Maybe not. Okay. So I'm just going to roughly do this for, for now. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with Adobe Illustrator, but that's what this tool is. Um, I use a lot of the Adobe suite for this stuff. Um, I sort of hate to give a shout out to Adobe because I'm kind of mad at them right now. Uh, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to block this, this part right here uh, for the illustration. All right, so now the line's not going behind his head or whatever. Uh, so yeah, so um, let's see. I don't, can't even tell. I'm trying to look at the live chat to see if there's anybody in. Um, Uh, I'm going to put on a little music and do some drawing. If anybody has any questions or anything, then um, just hit me up and I'll just check the, uh, I'll check the stream every once in a while. Um, and I'm going to be low five.
All right, I don't know if you can tell this, but I'm having <laughs> really weird time with Illustrator keeps locking up. So I might actually have to abort, try and figure this out, see what's going on. Give it one more shot. I'm going to uh, restart Illustrator, see how I do. Maybe. Oh, Illustrator's totally locked up now. Try one more time. You can see why I'm mad at Adobe. All right, let's see. Yeah, it's just really laggy for some reason. Um, maybe my computer doesn't like to um, use multiple cameras and so I'm not even touching it. It's just doing weird stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, sorry guys, we tried. Uh, I'm gonna abort mission. I'll uh, I'll post a time lapse of. I've got some earlier time lapses of this illustration, and I'll do some more of this and I'll post a time lapse and once I get the hardware software stuff figured out, maybe I can do another drawing like this. Uh, so, you know, we like experiments on this channel. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah. Uh, quick update. TJ. So the, I'm, I'm streaming from my house today. TJ and I um, will be in the studio again soon. We don't know when we're sort of coming up with how we want the format of the show to go. Um, and we've got some updates on books and that kind of thing that we want to do. But we've both also been doing some work, uh, other job work that pays money. So we've had to put this on the back burner for a little bit. But we're going to be back at it soon. So um, I'll connect with you guys there. And uh, TJ and I can tell you about what's coming up. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you have a great day.